Hello everybody, I'm back again with another story. Now, this week I read to you what the ladybird heard. There it is, and we read it as part of a farm topic that we're thinking all about farm animals, aren't we, this week? And so this was a lovely story by Julia Donaldson again. Well, it's all those wonderful stories for us. What the ladybird heard. Well, today's story is what the ladybird heard next. It's another exciting adventure with our very favourite little ladybird on the farm, no doubt coming to the rescue of some of her farm animal friends. And you can see over here, Lanky Len and Hefty Hugh, and they're back on the scene, back up to their old tricks. Wonder what's going to happen in this story with those naughty robbers back on the scene. So good job we've got this clever ladybird around. Our favourite crimes, crime fighting ladybird, crime fighting mini beast friend. Anyway, here she is. What the ladybird heard next. Once upon a farm lived a ladybird and these are the things that she saw and heard. The cow in her shed, the horse in his stall, the barn full of the cats who purred on the garden wall, the barn full of straw, the field full of sheep, the kennel where the dog lay fast asleep, <coughs> the fish in the pond, the drake and the duck, the hive of bees and the heap of muck. Poo-wee! The hog in his sty and the goose in her pen and the coop which was home to the fat red hen. There's the coop right there where the fat red hen lives. They look very happy on the farm, don't they? And they've all got their own special little places to live. And the farmer who works on the farm lives in the farmhouse and he takes care of them all. And the ladybird doesn't really have a special home. She just likes to live around and about. She's a wild mini beast, so she hasn't got, she doesn't need looking after in the same way. She can pretty much look after herself. And she's also very good at looking after all the other animals too, isn't she? Now, the fat red hen with her thin brown legs laid lots and lots of speckled eggs. But then, oh, help, oh no, oh dear. Those eggs began to disappear. Poof. Each morning, all the eggs had gone. And the animals asked, what's going on? Couldn't quite work it out. Where were these eggs disappearing to? I'll find out, said the ladybird. So she flew and she flew and she saw and she heard. She's really good, isn't she? Because she's got those wings. She can fly off and go and find out what's going on. Hmm. I think we can see what's going on, can't we? Those two bad guys are back on the scene. She saw two men with a big black van, with a torch and a sack and a cunning plan. They saw they were Hefty Hugh and Lanky Len, who'd been to jail, but were out again. Said Lanky Len to Hefty Hugh, let's steal another egg or two. Oh, well, surprise, surprise, they are behind the eggs disappearing. They're stealing them. They'll never learn, will they, these two? But Hefty Hugh said, listen Len, I vote we steal the fat red hen. So not the eggs, it's not enough to steal the eggs, they're going to steal the hen as well. We'll make our way to the chicken coop and scoop her up in one fell swoop. Just think of all those eggs she'll lay us and all the money folk will pay us. So we're going to sell her wonderful eggs, we're going to steal the hen. And then when she lays all her eggs, they're going to sell them and make lots and lots and lots of money. And Len replied, we'll soon be rich. It makes my fingers start to itch. They're going to go off and steal 
the red hen this time. Do you remember what they stole last time? Well, they tried to. The prize cow. Do you remember? Well, they didn't get away with that. And I'm hoping they don't get away with stealing the hen this time. The little spotty ladybird told the animals what she'd heard. Hefty you and Lanky Len are planning to steal the fat red hen. And the cow's thinking, phew, so it's not me this time. <laughs> Somebody else. Then the cow said, moo, and then said, cluck. Hiss, said the goose, and quack, said the duck. Hey, said the horse. Oink, said the hog. Ah, said the sheep, and woof, said the dog. I think we've heard that before, haven't we, in the other story? And the two cats meowed, those bad, bad men. We can't let them steal the fat red hen. But the ladybird said, listen, quick, I've thought of a really clever trick. Oh, thank goodness for that. Ladybird's got another clever plan. Do you remember the one last time? When all the animals were making the wrong sounds and Lanky Len and Hefty Hugh ended up in the duck pond. Do you remember that one? It was good, wasn't it? I wonder what they're going, where they're going to end up this time. At the dead of night, the two bad men opened the coop and snatched the hen. But the fat red hen began to cluck. <coughs> Why don't you steal the downy duck? Her eggs are bigger far than mine, and people say they taste divine. Mm. Mm. Good thinking that, said Lanky Len. They tiptoed to the pond, but then, ooh, so it looks like they're going to leave the red hen alone and go for the duck instead. The downy duck began to quack. me in your sack. Why don't you steal the goose instead? She's bigger still and better fed. Her eggs are huge and tasty too. Hmm, good thinking that, said Hefty Hugh. Oh, so now they're going to leave the duck alone and go for the goose. <laughs> but when they tried to seize the goose, she hissed at them. I'm not much use. Why don't you steal that great big bird? The super duper snuggly snurred. Hmm. Well, I don't think I've ever seen a bird like that on a farm. Have you? I've certainly never seen one at Farmer Gow's when I've ever been there or in any of my farm books. A snuggly snurd that lays blue eggs. I wonder if they're making it up. Do you think they're playing a clever trick? What? said Len. And who? said Hugh. The goose replied, oh, I thought you knew. She lays the biggest eggs of all. And each one looks like a rugby ball. If you've seen a rugby ball, but they're about this size. Can you imagine that as an egg, having that for your breakfast? Take you all day to eat it, wouldn't it? The duck joined in. Oh, she's friendly too. I'm sure she'd love to live with you. She'll put an end to all your cares. You'll very soon be millionaires. Where is the snurd? asked Lanky Len. Not far away, chipped in the hen. She lives inside that big brown heap. You'll find her there. She's fast asleep. Oh, look in the muck pile. Pooey. I wonder if they're going to be silly enough to go in there looking for the snurd. Oh, looks like they are. <laughs> the two thieves laughed. We've got it made. Let's take turns with the farmer's spade. They dug and they dug and Len said, And Hugh said, so do you, <laughs> whiffy. And Len said, where's that giant bird, the super duper snuggly snurd? She's rather shy, the goose replied. She must be hiding deep inside. He's got to go further and further into that big pile of poo. <laughs> What a 
funny trick. So they dug a tunnel, nice and deep. Oh, look, they're going right inside. That must really smell. That's it, said Hugh. Now in we creep. I think we're nearly there, said Len. The snurd will soon be ours. But then... Going to happen now. They're inside a great big pile of muck on the farm. The heap collapsed. It fell right on top of them. Can you imagine all that poo landing on your head? Splat! Ugh. And Hugh said, yuck! <laughs> We're covered head to toe in muck. And Len complained, there is no snurd. They just made up that giant bird. Oh dear, he's found out it's a trick, so not an easy covered in muck. He's realised that he's had a trick played on him. Serves him right. I don't feel very sorry for him at all. And there's the ladybird flying about, enjoying the joke. She's so clever, isn't she? I don't think I'd have been able to think of that plan. The other animals gathered round and all let out a deafening sound. See if you can join in. The horse makes a nee! and the cow made a moo sound and the hog went oink, oink, oink. Remember another name for a hog is a pig? And the sheep went baa. The dog went woof, woof. And the cats meowed. And then went cluck, 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 cluck. What a racket. Oh, there's the duck. Quack, 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 quack. And the goose. Honk, honk, honk. What a racket. What a row. The farmer woke and said, goodness me. And he had a word with his prize queen bee. It's in his beehive. There's the sort of boss of the beehive. And that's the queen bee. And he's had a word with the queen bee. Told him all about, told her all about it. And so the bees are chasing off Lanky Len and Hefty Hugh. The bees chased after the two bad men who never came back to the farm again. Then the cow said moo and the hen said cluck. Hiss said the goose and quack said the duck. Nay said the horse, oink said the hog, Ba said the sheep and woof said the dog. And the farmer cheered and both cats purred, but the ladybird said never a word, and neither did the snuggly snurd. <laughs> Just because there's no such thing. And there are all the lovely eggs at the back. All the different eggs that the ducks and the geese and the hens lay, but not the snuggly snurd. Maybe you could draw a picture of the snuggly snurd or you could make up your own funny animal that lives on the farm, a made up animal. Maybe you could draw, make a, a, an animal that looks a little bit like a cow or a little bit like a sheep or even try drawing your own snuggly snurd or another kind of bird. It'd be great fun, wouldn't it? So we've come to the end of what the ladybird heard next and I'll be back next time with another story. See you soon.